hello and welcome back to Elite Dangerous. <sighs> I have been wanting to play this game again for absolutely ages, but I had a few things that were stopping me. One is the energy problems that I've been going with, so we'll ignore that. But the main one is, is that when I'm playing this game, I have to spend a lot of time um, in other programs. For example, I have to spend... let me... oop, let me close the Elite Dangerous launcher. I have to spend a lot of time here in Anara because it has information about um, trading markets and engineers and all sorts of stuff that I find very useful. Um, I also occasionally use the EDD Discovery tool. Um, it, it like has a flight log. It shows you everything that's happening. Like, um, this is today's date, and it says um, all the stuff, um, all the stuff that you know that's happened. It's updating all the information. It knows where I am. It knows that a friend has come online. So yeah, but what I I usually record using um, a program called Dxtory. Dxtory will not allow me to have you know show other windows like that. But I finally worked out how to do it with OBS. Just admiring Saturn there um, in the distance. And something there is eclipsing something. Either that or it's just the night side of a um, of a um, of a planet of a moon. Yeah. <laughs> what am I trying to say? Yeah, the other thing is is I wanted to have um, a cockpit cam. Um, a face cam in in one of the corners or in the top of the screen, but I've discovered that my um, lighting. Well, that's not good, is it? The other thing I've got is a new internet service provider. Let's hope that that does not happen too often. If it does, I might have to send my internet through a VPN to see if that's um, if that's more stable. What was I trying to say? Green screen, yes. I wanted to have a face cam, but I really need to be able to green screen that, otherwise it takes up too much of the um, image. Basically, you, want, you, know, you only want to see me in superimposed on the game. But I don't have the room or the lighting for my green screen drop cloth to work properly. So, unfortunately, you know, all we've got is um, is what's here. Of course, this game is gorgeous. Um, I so need to save up for a VR headset. <laughs> or I need generous people to buy me one. Alright. Why am I playing again? Because stuff is happening in the game. Um, the Thargoids are attacking, is the main thing. Uh, there's also engineers to uh, soup up your ships. I'm currently in my ASP Explorer. If we pop over to my spreadsheet, my engineering spreadsheet, that's a bit bright after the dark of space. Um, we've seen my ASP is set up for exploration currently, and I've got an overcharged power plant. I've got clean thrusters. I think I actually want to switch that out for dirty thrusters. Now, dirty thrusters are going to run hotter, but they'll go so much faster, and I need that to run away because I don't have any weapons on this thing, and only minimal shields. Um, but it has the best jump drive you can have. Um, what is my jump range with my current setup? I also have to remember what my controls are. Yeah. So, my current jump range is 41 light years. Now, if I stripped this ship down and made it as light as possible, I could get 50 plus light uh, light years per jump. So, this ship is pretty quick. Um, also in my fleet, I have a Python that's set up for uh, multi-role. Um, basically, um, a mission runner. It can do a bit of combat, um, a bit of cargo, that sort of stuff. Like it's got 6A shields reinforced to level 3. And it's got some boosted um, beam lasers and stuff. And it's and you can see it um, it it has a dirty drive. Um, and these are like modules which I'm not currently using. Uh, my my Imperial Clipper I'm not really using at the moment, but I don't want to sell it because I don't actually have the uh, the Imperial rank to buy another one. 
I got this one as part of a community goal, which I took part in, which let me buy an, an Imperial Clipper. So that one is just stripped down. So what we want to do is we are going to help some people who have been attacked by the Thargoids. Um, now, is there a way to get... I thought there was a way to get the news while here in space. Um, yeah, you could invite other people to join your crew, which is... <laughs> Um, I've not done that yet. I'd have to sort of check how that works and so on. But basically, you can actually have gunners on board your ships and they can sort of be running the guns or an engineer that's sort of in charge of where the energy goes. So what else have we got here? Um, this is the history of my contacts. This is all new. Remove from history, send friend request, block player. Yeah, this is going to start with uh, with me doing a bit of an exploration. Uh, new inbox. Okay, I thought there was a way you could get the hard points deploying. I don't know if I've got any hard points in in here. Um, I've got advanced discovery scanner, frame shift wake scanner, and a data link scanner. That's it. <laughs> Yeah, no weapons on this ship. Ah, here we go. Galnet News. Galactic authorities have appealed to independent pilots to deliver food, water, basic medicines and natural fabrics to starports that have been attacked by Thargoids. Pilots can also help by evacuating civilians from affected starports. Thargoid attacks have been reported in the following systems. Galactic authorities have appealed to independent pilots to develop to deliver meta-alloys to starports experiencing technical issues. Yeah, it turns out that those um, unknown artifacts that everyone has been hauling in all this time are, th um, are Thargoids. Apparently there's talk of the news being um, automatically voiced. But that's obviously something they haven't done yet. So, we want to head back to my home system where I can re-outfit this ship. So, let's get back to Jameson Memorial. Go. That red indicator means that it's where my ships are. Plot the route there. Uh, can I do this without refueling? It's not showing me my jump lines. Yes, I can. It's not that far away. Um, um, with with it's only two. It's only two jumps away. Fair enough. Um, oh yeah, my hard points are out. What is my retract hard points button? There we go. What's that? Jump exceeds drive fuel use limit of 5.10 tons. Then... Why is that... I clicked lock on rather than plot root, didn't I? You can tell I'm a bit rusty. Right, let's open this up. Go here. Actually click plot root. There we go. Right, so we can see that the place we're going is medium security and that my legal status there is clean. There's all this nice information that they've added to this game now. So. The way I'm going to edit these, the way I'm going to edit these episodes is, if I, you know, sometimes it will just be enjoying the ride, but if it, you know, if I'm silent for too long, it means obviously nothing's happening. Oops, there we go. 
drop out. Fuel scoop should should kick in. I'm gonna do a scan here just in case there's anything. There you go, 19 new astronomical units discovered. Gets me a little bit of money every time. Yeah, so if I don't say anything for a while, it means nothing in uh, nothing interesting is happening. And so I'll either speed up those segments, so you might get little bits of of super fast thing, or if it's a minute or two, I'll just fade to black, come back where when stuff happens. I'm going to record for about an hour an episode, and then we'll see how long that is when it gets cut down. This game has a lot more downtime than some other games because it's a relatively realistic simulation of actually, well, obviously with super light travel and that, but it takes time to get places, it takes time to dock, you know, and if you're um, trying to get... <laughs> I don't usually play with the music on, so the music is new to me, but, you know, I figure it'll make it a bit more interesting. Um, yeah, so because there's a bit more downtime than there is in, say, RimWorld or some other games, I've got to sort of not have the pressure of trying to talk all the time. Because, you know, if I feel I have to really perform and push it and be constantly, you know, sin uh, scintillating and entertaining for an hour, not going to happen. And I don't think you can really get much done in this game in less than an hour. So, getting ready to slow down, try and keep it at 8 to 7 seconds. My throttle is sticking a bit, I might have to open it up and grease the rails a bit. I've got a, a, a full um, HOTUS flight stick set up here bolted to the side of my chair so I can sit relatively comfortably as I play this. Okay, so Jameson Memorial and this whole system, this is the home of the Pilots Federation. You can only get access here if you have elite status in something or if you were one of the early backers of the game. I joined at, um, at, um, at the late beta stage, so that's why I've got here. Got access to here. What's good is they sell every module, every ship, at a 10% discount. So it does mean that I, you know, don't have to do quite as much running around for stuff. Getting ready to disengage. This is where we'll find out if I still know how to land. Did, um, air traffic control and it really does in, uh, make the immersion nice. I mean this this game I mean the is that person coming out? How big are they? 3-7. There's my landing pad. I think we can get around him. We're, we're both small. The sound design in this game has always been impressive. And it just gets better and better. Oops. Overshot that ever so ever so slightly. Perfect. And to hang our starport services. Right, we need to retrofit ourselves if we are going to be rescuing refugees. Commence power down. You are most welcome, Commander. So let's get straight into the outfitting. Now, I could switch switch to the Python. Um, it's a 
well, they're both medium ships, but the Python is more of a cargo ship. It's got more space inside, so I could fit more people. But the problem is, where are those stations which have been damaged? Do they show up on here? Now, I thought there was a way you could filter the map to show the damaged space stations. I'm not seeing that. Ooh, use jet, jet cone boost. Um, white dwarfs in the game have basically magnetic pulsars coming off them, and you can use them to boost your engines for a super jump. So this thing is basically saying if you turn that on, it will use that as part of plotting the routes, which is pretty useful. Okay, let's jump to Inara to the news section because we should be able to get information about the about the um, space stations which need help. The affected starports are Titan's daughter in the Tigeta system, Lyman Legacy in HIP 16. 753 and the Oracle in the Pleiades sector. Okay, let's see if we can search for these things and find out how far away they are from us. Yeah, this is why we need a fast ship. Ah, there's actually um, someone I know here, I think. I think that's what that symbol there means. So, the Tigeta system, if I it's 455 light years away, which at 40, 40 light years a jump, it's about 10, 15 jumps, so it, so it won't take too long to get there. Um, I system map not available. Okay, let's go to Tigeta. The other stations are probably nearby. Yeah, yeah. Basically, the Thargoids have attacked that area. Right, so now we know where we're going. We can go to Outfitting. Optional Internals. Okay, so you can see currently I was running for first class passenger cabins. I don't think we're going to need first class passenger cabins. We just want to pack in as many warm bodies as we can and get them the hell out of there. So, 6E, this is capacity 32. So, buying options. Um, I'm just going to exchange, which will actually gain me money. Okay, let's lose the planetary vehicle hangar so we can fit some more economy class cabins in uh, 3e that's only capacity 4 but every life still need that I don't need the detailed surface scanner hmm I want the advanced discovery scanner still. I could downgrade my fuel scoop rather than that one. Yeah, let's do that. That will let us fit a lot more people in. So, browse shop, passenger cabin, 5e economy holds another 16 people. Maybe I should be going with the Python. Let me take a look at what the Python's currently got fitted to it. Now the good thing is, is that both, if you see here, both the Python and the ASP both have size 5 
jump um, hyperspace jumps. So if I so so if I transfer that to the Python, I'll still have a relatively good jump range on the Python. I could downgrade its shield slightly. You know, if I'm just doing this, I don't need level six shields. The rest of it will be fine. I have heard reports that it's very hot inside those stations, though. And the advantage of the ASP is it's running very cool. Um, the engines, like, in normal operations, it's only got 23% heat, whereas the Python, I think, runs a lot hotter. So, yeah, let's stick with this. So, buy this in place of the fuel scoop. And we'll put a 3A fuel scoop in. That wasn't a, um, I didn't just accidentally sell an engineered fuel scoop, did I? No, I don't actually have an engineered fuel scoop. So, 3A fuel scoop. I need any cargo capacity. I might need some cargo capacity for rewards is the main thing. And, th and it won't let you take a mission which has cargo as a reward if you don't have room for it. Okay. Um... Detailed surface scanner. Oh, we can fit another two people. Okay, so what have we got? We've got... Uh, 32, 48... ...50. Well, we can take 50 people at a time. Okay, we've got two heatsink launchers, which I think will be useful. Uh, nothing else there we can really take. I did want to make an adjustment to the livery. Ooh. Which vehicle would you like to modify? Empty bays. This is new. I wonder why my other ships, which I'm pretty certain are stored in this station, aren't, aren't showing up. Huh. Or well, that could be for, like, um... Fighter craft, of course. Certain ships can now have ship shipboard fighters. And you can recruit NPC pilots who can either fly your main ship while you're in the fighter craft, or vice versa. Okay. Alright, so the ship name is One Jump Behind. That's um, actually a shortened form of its name. Its entire name is One Jump So Far Ahead that if Einstein is to be... Uh, be believed and the universe is curved, you end up one jump behind. Uh, I do want to just change the ship ID. Um, just because it does fit. So we can put, put Aeron in there for the ship IDs. See, um, the names actually show up on the outside of the ships. There you go, the one jump behind. Wondering if you can get a shot of where it says Aeron. Nah, can't quite see it. It costs a pound, a pound or two to add that sort of cosmetic stuff to your ships. Just wondering if any of these will give the the shot. We could go with the external camera one, uh, once we get outside. Or it's possible I haven't paid for the ship ID to actually appear on the outside of my ship yet. Okay, um, Universal Cart Cartographics. While we are here, we will sell the data we've got. See, Crew Lounge. This is where you can actually hire pilots.
basically one, uh, once you've hired them you see profit share you pay that upfront cost and then they take a percentage of of everything you get <laughs> I like the fact they all have different personalities and stuff um, and they'll even Im um, improve an ability um, while they're being while they're being being used okay anything new in contacts authority combat search search and rescue agent Ah, we're here to find those missing people. Can you help us? Yeah, see, it used to be if you found an escape pod, if you picked it up, it was considered a legal salvage, and the police would blow you up on site. Now, most, I think, as, um, escape pods and stuff like that, they can be legally salvaged. Um, or, one way or another, if you bring them here, you can um, sell them. Okay, how many jumps is it to our destination? Twelve jumps to Taygetta. That's easily enough done. How are we doing on time? Well, I've been playing for half an hour. I don't think there's been that much editing needed so far. Uh, maximum power to the engines. Space station go away as we whiz past. I don't have headlock anymore. Um, the little um, ED tracker headlock module did work very well, but unfortunately the USB socket fell out of it, which is a little annoying. So I am looking to buy another head tracking soft, uh, software, probably a proper one this time, the sort of one with infrared lights that works with a camera. But money is very tight, so I'll have to see what a good budget model is and see whether I can get it in a January sale or something. So, we're just going to honk, honk and jump until we get there. Honking is our discovery scanner, which means if it's a system we've not encountered before. Yeah, this fuel scoop is not as good as the one before, so it's going to take a little longer to pick up the fuel we need. Luckily, with this ship running so cool, overheating is not really much of an issue. Alright, we're jumping to an anarchy system, but luckily we're not going to be there for long. What is my heatsink button? It's this one in an up position. Okay. I've got like a little piece of paper with all the controls print printed out. Of course, there's always the possibility we'll get intercepted in hyperspace by a Thargoid. They don't seem to be hostile hostile all the time to individual pilots unless you mess with them. So if we go there, we slow down, let the fuel flow in. Why does that keep happening? The weight of my ship changed because of the changes I made. Yeah, when I plotted this route, I hadn't made the changes yet, had I? Tegeta. Clear route, plot route. There we go. How many jumps is it now? 
Yeah, so it's slightly longer. Um, I think my ship got heavier, maybe? Now, it, when I was playing this before I got my current internet, it would take so long for a system to load. Sometimes it would sit there for 15, 20 seconds. One of the advantages of my new internet is it's faster. One of the disadvantages is it's not as reliable. Okay, now these are a series of brown dwarfs, so I have to watch my fuel. You can't re uh, refuel at a brown dwarf. Good for about 500 light years between refills, though, I think. Judging by how much of the fuel bar in the bottom right each of these jumps uses up. There, and the next system is uh, Class G. KGB Foam. Those are the classes of star you can fuel scoop from. Gotta watch my heat doing this. Because it's going to take some time for me to be able to accelerate up. I won't start taking damage until 100%. Right, what class is the next star? Uh, M, I can scoop at the next star as well. The faster you're going, the more fuel you get. So if you actually keep the accelerator all the way on, you can skim a star at a greater distance so your heat doesn't go up so much, but the scoop rate stays nice and high. You can just see the star rolling by. That'll do. Okay. Tegeta is the next jump. This star here is a blue-white star, which means it's quite big and quite hot. See, I'm going just as fast as I was before, but it doesn't look like we're going, going around it as quick because the star is just so much bigger. Ooh, there's a nice prominence there. See the magnetic fields curving the stellar mass? Very nice. I do like the uh, local chatter that shows up. Um, local cruise ship. I'd like to direct your attention to our flight attendants for a brief safety demonstration. <laughs> okay. Let's get into Tegeta and find that damaged station. Another brief safety demonstration. It's either a different cruise ship or it wasn't that brief a demonstration. Maybe it was too brief. Also, I don't think they should be doing safety demonstrations in their briefs. They should wear proper flight uniforms. Sets of, whoa! That is a bright sun. 
Okay, let's slow down. Check our system map. Yep, that's a damaged station. Titan's Daughter, I believe. And the rescue ship, Titan's Daughter. Okay. Fuel scoop disengaged. So there's a rescue ship nearby. Okay, any other inhabited places in the system? Yes, there's a lot of stuff on some landfall planets. But, but we don't know about them unless we do a detailed scan of the planets, or we go to the nav point. Nav points act, um, actually have a purpose now. If you go to a nav point and scan it, it fills in the um, system map for you. Or at least it, it highlights all the places you can land. Okay, I'm gonna want better shields that, uh, than engines, I think. Because there might be some debris floating around. Whoa. It's a gas... There's a, a ringed gas giant. And this moon has a ring as well. Wait. Titan's daughter is in the rings. Oh my word, this is just gorgeous. I would stop to take a screenshot, but seeing as we are here to save lives, look at the way the shadow just... Oh. This game... It's like I'm flying down onto a record. Really better watch my speed. Don't want to emergency stop into those rocks. Oh! What? Okay, this is a Navy interdiction. I'm going to submit. Ooh. Okay, what does he want? Yeah, okay. What do you guys want? System Defense Force. They should just want to scan me to make sure I'm not up to any anything nefarious. Scan detected. Collected, encoded, eight untypical skill shield scans. Okay. Your scan is clear. Carry on with your journey, Commander. Yes, I'm trying to save the lives of your citizens. You're not making my job very easy. Okay, you are... If I boost, you're an hour and 20 minutes away at this speed, so... We need to just sort of skim over the top of the record. Better throttle back. Whoa, whoa, okay. <laughs> there we go. Once we're under a million meters, then I can disengage. Whoa. Okay, so you're one of those stations. Commander, you're through to flight control. This station is undergoing emergency evac procedures. Do not request docking unless you intend to rescue survivors. This thing took a beating. that green stuff on it. There's venting gases that are burning. Okay, let's try and get in position for a docking. The toast rack's all busted up. find the zero point on my throttle. The 
there's some other human pilots in there. They're the hollow things. to landing pad 18. Watch my temperature spike. And it really is spiking. Try and duck under that. A drop a heat sink. No. Nope. There we go. Heat sink away. Activated silent running by accident. No. Oh, you scumbags. Now, is that my internet, or is that... Or is that them having trouble? Okay, well, I think we try that again in the next episode. <laughs> uh, cut short by the internet gods. <laughs>